Hey everybody, Quantum here, and take a look at this. We made the leaderboard in just 160 matches, so that was pretty cool to see. I uh, didn't check it the other day when I thought I should have been on it, but uh, we're definitely on it today because I saw somebody mention that people in the 2700s were still on it. So, uh, interesting. Uh, some very few matches, as you can see there, but let's go ahead and start commentating these matchups. I've switched the team around from my previous videos. We're using uh, Magnezone, Gyarados, and Togekiss now, so we've swapped out the Snorlax for the Togekiss, and in the first matchup we are walled by a Garchomp in the lead. So we swap in our Dragon Breath Gyarados. I know there's a variation of this team that uses Waterfall. I still prefer the Dragon Breath variant. We are a little walled against Togekiss on the switch in, if they if we switch in our Gyarados and they have a Togekiss, but it is still manageable because we can bring back in the Magnezone and farm down, even though we won't win switch advantage. Regardless though, we are able to take switch advantage in that scenario, which is really good because now we are able to completely avoid the Garchomp and Magnezone matchup. And the opponent opts to bring in their Metagross here instead of the Garchomp. Uh, so this is good because this means that our uh, Magnezone can now be aligned against the Metagross and then we have a Togekiss in the back for the Garchomp. And the way that this will play out, pretty simple. We're going to be able to get off a Flamethrower and burn the last shield, bring in the Magnezone, shield up whatever they throw, and we have enough energy on the Magnezone that even if they farmed up to 100 energy on their Metagross, um, the Magnezone would be able to get to the Wild Charge before the Metagross was able to get in the extra bullet punches needed to build up to an Earthquake. So the way this is going to play out, we're going to throw the Flamethrower, get the shield, they're going to farm us down, and again, this is fine. This is normally a, a, a bad situation because they might bait you here, You're, I'm gonna shield it, but I know that even if they had 100 energy, um, they would take a, a three more bullet punches to get to the Earthquake, and I would get to the, uh, the Wild Charge and two Sparks. So you can see there we're able to outpace them before they're, get, they're able to get to the Earthquake and take the win uh, by realigning the matchups in that scenario. So very positive after coming back from a negative lead. Second match, man, again, negative lead. The, the game is really throwing some weird stuff at me I, i'm barely seeing any positive leads it's crazy at these higher ranks i might have to just switch this whole team entirely uh or either that or the game is trying to force me to lose games to bring my uh win percentage down uh because it's uh abnormally high like most high rank players are 55 to 60 percent win ratio i think we're still in the 70s but we've only played 160 matches so it's, it's gonna go down no matter what Anyways, uh, so we have to switch out of that Haxorus matchup. Again, this is where having that Dragon Breath Gyarados is really, really clutch because we essentially have two counters to like Haxorus, Garchomps, um, not really Dragonite, we can stay in that matchup, even though we don't want to, but uh, you know, it, it's, it's working out in, in this scenario. So we're able to win the secondary matchup once again and line up the Togekiss with the Haxorus. We get a Charm in, which does a ton of damage. The Haxorus is basically on its last legs. They bring in their Metagross, and we're going to go in with the Magnezone again after we get that Pokemon realignment. And this is really good for us. We're just going to go double Wild Charge after we um, build up to two. We're going to shield this even though it's likely a Meteor Mash. It doesn't matter because, again, we have the double Wild Charge ready to go. And even if they fire off a second Meteor Mash, which they do, and uh, get us while we're double debuffed, because the move is double resisted, it still does a lot of damage, but we survive. We're going to be able to spark down, and we still have a full health Togekiss pretty much in the back. Don't know why I opted to throw this, but whatever, just wasting time. <laughs> so pretty uh, pretty crazy match that we were able to win back Switch from, um, and realign the Pokemon appropriately. Alright, third match. Can we get a positive lead? No, it's a mirror match, which is actually pretty stressful. In my last video, I talked about how this is... The most obnoxious matchup. Uh, it's 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 really difficult to play, um, especially if you're running this line, my line of three, because the whole back line is weak to Magnezone, right? So you do have some play if you lose the this initial matchup. It's not like make or break, which is what I thought when I was first playing this team. Basically, um, you you normally don't want to be the first person to throw wild charges, even though this is this is what I do here. Um, I usually go double wild charge. Sometimes I'll bait, but you know, most people shield. Um, and at this stage, I'm thinking like, I have to make sure I get this Magnezone out of here because I, 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 but my back line can't see it, right? So I'm doing everything I can to try to win switch. Um, but we get our two wild charges shielded. The opponent builds up to another wild charge, throws theirs. 
They're now double debuffed. We're double debuffed. But we're going to go for this mirror shot and then hopefully spark down. Oh man, why did I swap? That was a bad play. Because we could have just ate that mirror shot with our own um, with our own Magnezone, right? But I've had, I've had it such in my head from a previous team that you always want to cycle the Magnezone. So you always need to depend on bringing back in the Magnezone to deal heavy damage. But this team comp is, is so different because of the Togekiss in place of the... Uh, Gyarados, I mean, um, instead of the Snorlax, that you actually want to sometimes just let the Magnezone go down and play the game out from there. The opponent, as you know, didn't bring in another Steel-type. And again, it, I guess I made that swap because if they lead Magnezone, it's sometimes unlikely that they bring in another Steel. They, they, there is some teams that run Magnezone in the lead and Metagross, but it's, it's not very common and it's not a good team comp. Because if I mean, if you run into a, a hard counter in the lead, you only have one counter to it in the back. Um, but the opponent ends up running the same line as, as us, so they back out once they see that there's nothing that they can really do with their Gyarados and no shields against the Magnezone. Alright, so finally, the fourth match, we're met with a Togekiss lead. This is really good for us. The opponent safe swaps in a Snorlax. This is okay. We're going to bait with the Mirror Shot, and then we're going to go for the Wild Charge. So the opponent shields because, again, they don't want to be down that massive amount of health. And because they were baited, they really can't afford to go down two shields. Because there was a Togekiss in the lead, we opt to bring in our Gyarados because it has Dragon Breath and this way it avoids the Togekiss. But they actually go for a Skull Bash, which does a ton of damage on Gyarados. Regardless though, since the opponent already burned a shield, um, we might have been able to double shield and lick down and win switch advantage, which probably was the play, even though they would be down two shields. Um, but again, that would that would assume that they have like a Metagross or something in the back. But I, th I think, actually no, that wouldn't have worked because we would have charmed down the Metagross if they had a Metagross in the back and just flamethrowed the Metagross and KO'd it with two shields, blocking both the medium mashes. So they couldn't afford to go down two shields to, to zero. Um, but they have a Swampert in the back, which is pretty interesting that they didn't opt to try to win Switch. Um, yeah, if they had a Metagross, like I said, it, there wasn't really too much play. But against against the Magnezone, I think the Swampert could probably take it out because the Wild Charges only do like 30%. So I would need like three Wild Charges with the Sparks. Um, and then as I debuff myself, those Mud Shots would be ridiculous. And Swampert spams its charge moves so fast that my shields would basically be useless. It would get to three, uh, three Hydro Cannons way before I get to three Wild Charges. So this one really cost the opponent. Um, the fact that I let the Skull Bash through, I, you know, I, sh I should have opted to shield the first one just in case it was a Skull Bash. Now I know if the Snorlax builds up a lot of energy, even if it's a Body Slam, it's sometimes worth shielding the first one <clears throat> to avoid getting hit with the Skull Bash. So at this stage, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. I don't know why I threw another Mirror Shot instead of just building up to the Wall Charge um, and winning the game. So. Just a couple extra seconds tacked on unnecessarily, once again. <clears throat> but we're 4-0 after coming back from two negative leads, one mirror match, and a positive lead. And we're met with another another mirror match, which again, I really don't like. Um, and this time it's a Shadow Magnezone. So in my opinion, there's no real reason to run Shadow Magnezone. Magnezone already puts out enough damage, and you actually want the bulk or the extra little bit of bulk on the Magnezone. So in this scenario... <clears throat> Uh, the opponent and I are both going to kind of continuously throw mirror shots. Nobody really wants to be the first person to throw a wild charge. I do get the attack debuff. I'm not sure if they got one on, on us. They might have already. Maybe not though. Um, but the fact that they threw this so so shortly after they threw the mirror shot leads me to believe it was a wild charge. So that's why I shield it. And now I'm going to start going for my wild charges. There is a case to be made here to just go for mirror shots. But they actually don't shield so it works out for us. Because again, this was like the, the first that I was playing with this team. Um, and I was under the mindset like I have to get the Magnezone out of the picture completely. But again, since playing this team a few more times, I've realized that no, if the Magnezone double debuffs itself and we bring in like a Togekiss and farm it down, it's actually not the worst, it's assuming the Magnezone is tapped out on energy. Um, so we do have some play if we don't win the, the initial uh, mirror match. It's not a good idea. Obviously, you want to win the mirror match. But if, if you lose it and the Magnezone is low enough and double debuffed, um, it is still playable. You know, and if they opt to swap out and give up switch advantage, hopefully you can line up something positive with the Gyarados and the Togekiss because they cover each other nicely. All right, so the opponent brings in their uh, 
Togekiss to match up against our Gyarados because we swapped out. So it's literally what I just said. That's what you kind of want to avoid and I've, le I've learned that. But at this stage, um, oof, they have a Dragonite and we have the Togekiss to take the win. So what happened is I went two and three in the previous set using the Snorlax team and I was like, yeah, that's it. And I instantly swapped over to the Snorlax and then, or from the Snorlax to the Togekiss and then uh, just played this match or this set instantly and went 5-0. So pretty good. And you can see here, it took me a while to catch that uh, Trico, so skipping that. But uh, you can see there, 140 matches, 102 and 140 and a 28-25 rating. So thanks for watching. Quantum is out.